Hey guys, welcome back to Reserved Investments on YouTube. Okay, we got to have a candid discussion. A lot of you guys want me to do basic traditional investing videos on this channel. And I am going to start to get into those topics. It's not going to take away from the core scope of this particular YouTube channel, which is really looking at the antiques and collectibles trade from the perspective of someone educated not only in the trade, but also in economics and finance. I assure you guys, the scope and content of this channel is not changing. But I am going to have a little bit of a discussion right now about building wealth in a capitalistic economy over the long term. Now, I'm gonna start you out with some facts and numbers. Are you aware if back in September of 2010, you would have put $10,000 in a Vanguard S&P 500 index fund and you didn't touch it, you didn't add any money to it. September of 2010, you took $10,000, you put it in that fund and you forgot about it. Today, in September of 2020, remember guys, I don't know when you're viewing this particular video, but it was filmed in September of 2020. So please keep that in mind. You would have $37,555.02 just by doing nothing. Meaning you took $10,000 back in September of 2010. You put it in a Vanguard S&P 500 index fund. You didn't add another penny to it. You just forgot about it. You let the dividends go into that fund and compound. You pretty much looked at your statement in September of 2020. You would have $37,555.02. Which means... That $10,000 investment would have almost quadrupled over just 10 years. This is something where when you guys reach out to me and you start talking about gains in Pokemon, in Magic the Gathering, in some of these pop culture collectibles that are very speculative, what is it that I tell you? You would be better off over the long term in a more stable asset meaning an index fund, the financial markets, the stock market at large. If you're going to invest in the antiques and collectibles trade, you use short-term flips over the short term. That's where you make your money. If you want to invest in diversified assets after you're established, you go after mature and established markets on the antique side of the equation. You do not attempt to hold speculative collectibles for the long term. It never works out. Guys, I have been involved in these markets since the age of 12. In December of this year, I will be 44 years of age. I know I don't look it. I get it. But trust me, I will be 44 years of age in December of this year. I know a lot of smart people in the antiques and collectibles trade. And unfortunately, I know a lot of Timmies and Poindexters in the antiques and collectibles trade. Most of the smart people in the trade when I was growing up taught me all these fundamentals. That's what I'm teaching you directly on this channel, or if you read the articles that I write through Antiques and Auction News, or if you come to me for consulting services. I am teaching you these basics that I live by each and every day. Some of you out there get triggered by them. Believe me, I read your comments, even if they flow into the wonderful YouTube spam filter. I still read your comments. Believe me, it doesn't bother me at all. This channel is not for everyone. As a result, what I will tell you, if you do get triggered by this video or any of the content that I produce, please consider taking a break from the channel. I'm not going to get upset. On the flip side, though, if this content appeals to you, if you're getting something out of these videos, please consider subscribing, liking the video, leaving me a comment, or even sharing the video with other people so that they get access to this knowledge. Now, I'm going to name another statistic for you. If in September of 2010, you would have put $10,000 in a total stock market index fund, meaning a fund that tracks the total stock market by and large. That fund would have grew to $36,717 in 10 years. So from September 2010 to September 2020, you would have turned that $10,000 into $36,717. So again, it would have almost quadrupled, guys. This is why when the little Timmies reach out to me and they say, Sean, I can kick your ass with stock market gains by going after Lego or Magic the Gathering or Pokemon. What is it that I say to you? Dude, I could probably beat you hands down by doing nothing, just by letting my money roll over. Now, is there anybody out there I just want to know this. 
that literally had the foresight back in 2010 to go after and buy $10,000 worth of Pokemon cards, who has them today, who is now selling into the market. I guarantee you, there probably are a couple of people that did just that. Rudy got very lucky in Magic the Gathering, Rudy of Alpha Investments, by doing something similar. SM Pratt probably made money the same way. But guess what? In those two scenarios, you still had to take risk and you had to work in these particular businesses to make that money. If you were to put $10,000 in September of 2010 in a Vanguard 500 index fund, you wouldn't have had to lift a finger. It would have just happened by the magic of time and compounding. That money would have turned into $37,555.02. Do you see where I'm going with this? If you want to get involved in building long-term wealth in a capitalistic society, which is what we use in America and in most of the countries watching this channel, whether or not you have elements of socialism sewn into your economies, I'm not going to discuss that in this channel. I'm not getting political. What I am going to state, the root economic system that most of you are using is capitalism. Whether you're watching this in Australia, in Europe, in the Nordic countries, in Canada, Japan, wherever you're watching this particular content, I assure you, the main engine that drives your economy is capitalism. So where am I going with this? Well, I'm going to springboard now into another topic. There are three ways to build wealth over the long term in a capitalistic society or economy at large. The first is through equities. I just gave you an easy way to invest over the long term. Vanguard 500 Index Fund, Charles Schwab 500 Index Fund, whatever brokerage company you want to go with. Investing in index funds, mutual funds, passive investing. That's one way to do it. Another way, and this is slightly more risky, it's actually more risky than investing in index funds and mutual funds, is if you want to pick individual stocks, individual corporate bonds, you want to invest in that manner. By all means, there's still money to be made there, but overall, most likely your returns are not going to be on par with something like an S&P 500 index fund. Because if you could invest to that manner, let's be realistic here, you would be on par to become the next Warren Buffett or the next fictional Gordon Gecko. Most fund managers cannot even beat the returns of an S&P 500 index fund over the long term. Keep that in mind. As a matter of fact, I think it was Warren Buffett had a bet with somebody that he stated no hedge fund out there could beat the returns of an S&P 500 index fund. It was something like that. And he won the bet. And literally, he used the Vanguard S&P 500 index fund as a barometer to gauge the results. And he pretty much won just by using that fund. So that should tell you something when it comes to picking individual stocks. It's very hard to do over the long term. And it's inherently risky, both in the short term and the long term. Because remember, guys, if you put... $5,000 in Coca-Cola. Yeah, Coca-Cola is a blue chip company. But every quarter when Coca-Cola reports earnings to Wall Street, Wall Street wants to see continual growth. Anytime they do not have growth over the previous quarter, that stock's going to fall. If they have an accounting scandal, if they hire a new CEO and the CEO puts different product lines in the production that don't sell well, all that's going to translate to how that stock performs over the short term and the long term. So individual stocks, even if they are blue chips, are inherently risky. You must be very careful. Now, you're probably asking, well, Sean, you said there's three ways to build wealth in a capitalistic society. What are the other two? The second way is through real estate. Now, I want to prephase this with caution. I am not talking about buying houses out of floor closure, fixing them up and flipping them on the market. Though, if you have the knowledge and the means, you can make money in that market, obviously. What I mean by real estate is, if you know how to analyze properties, you have the money to play in that market, you go to the real estate market, you have your eye on an investment property, you buy that property, and you rent it out over the long term. Now, that is a hands-on asset, meaning if you're renting that to a couple and the couple calls you and says, hey, I'm sorry to tell you this, your whole HVAC system went out. You're going to have to buy a new HVAC system. Guess what? It's up to you to repair that property if you want to keep tenants in that property. So there is a lot of risk and a lot of expense with owning rental properties. But if it's done right, you can make a lot of money over the long term, guys. You have to hold the property literally 10, 20, 30 years until the mortgage is paid. And hopefully if you did it right, 
the people that are renting that property would have paid pretty much the mortgage and also put money into your pocket while you held that property. So at the end of 30 years, if it's a 30-year mortgage, you get a paid up property and you also got cash flow along the way. That's how renting real estate should work if it's done profitably. What I will tell you, renting real estate is not for everybody out there because to get to that point, you already have to be financially established because you're responsible for all the upkeep in that property and also any of the maintenance costs. And if you can't rent it out, you're still going to be forced to pay the mortgage while you try to advertise it on the rental market. So you have to be very careful in that sense. Now, this brings us to part three. Sean, what's the third way that you can make money in a capitalistic society? And this ties into antiques and collectibles. For those of you that have been watching now that I'm almost 11 minutes into this. I divide this up into two parts. Number one, you can better yourself. For instance, we're going to start there. Let's say you're in your 20s. You're watching this video and you really want to become a lawyer. You have a passion to go to law school. You really see yourself succeeding at that particular profession. If you come to me and you say, hey, Sean, I'm 20 years old, been out of school for two years. I just have this drive to go be a lawyer. Do you think it's worth it for me to take out school loans and become a lawyer? I'm going to tell you, yes, if that's what you want to do, you're young enough where you can go get a law degree. And even if you work literally the first 10 years of your profession, making $50,000 a year at an entry level law position, guess what? You still have time to make up for those lost wages to pay back the school loans. Because if you're 20 years, if you spend six years in law school, and even if you spend 10 years literally working at a law firm that you may not like making meek wages for what a lawyer should earn, when you're 36 or in your 40s and you start making 100, 120, 130, $140,000 a year, guess what? It's gonna pay off for you in the long run. The people who should not go to college are the people who tell me, Sean, I need to go find myself. Or, Sean, I want to go to college. I don't know what I'm going for. I'm going to date lots of women. I'm going to just have fun. You don't need to pay $50,000 a year to have fun, guys. That's stupidity. So if you're going to go to college, make sure you want to major in something. Even if it's business, if it's economics, finance, if you want to go be a lawyer, doctor, accountant, whatever it is, have an idea of what you want to be. Don't be one of these people that get a degree in right-handed puppetry or politics and have no desire to become a politician. Get an education in something you can use that's practical. That's all I'm going to tell you. Now, on the other end of that spectrum, obviously, one of the best ways to make money in a capitalistic society is through running your own business or being valuable in a market that requires you to be self-employed. For instance, I'll use myself as an example. I'm a consultant in the antiques and collectibles trade. I get paid to write articles. I have a YouTube channel. I have people reaching out that I charge money to to give them advice on the antiques and collectibles marketplace, regardless of how successful or not successful they are in other fields. I have doctors that come to me. I have people that make $20,000 a year that come to me for my advice. So that's an example of a way that you can make money through a business that you own. On the other end of the spectrum, let's say that you're one of these people that do want to flip collectibles on the secondary market, or you really have a knack for creating something, whether it's an idea that you had that you can manufacture, or you want to open up a restaurant or a retail shop, which I do not recommend in the year 2020 on both those counts. But let's say that you have that goal. That's a form of opening up your own business. Now, businesses, depending on the expense and the cost it takes to launch that enterprise, can be inherently risky. 90% or more of all businesses fail within their first five years. And that's due to a lack of capital and also a lack of managerial ability from the people that are considering themselves entrepreneurs. Not everybody out there can be an entrepreneur. I'm sorry to burst your bubble. You really have to do a personal self-assessment and analyze whether you're cut out to work for yourself or even own your own business before you start parking lots of money or borrowing on debit, credit, and the like to open up your own business. You should already know how you operate alone or even interacting with others. Are you able to interact with others? That's very important. Do you have the proper communication skills? You know, guys, one criticism I give of myself, especially on this YouTube channel is 
I think I need more experience in public speaking. I'm gonna be very honest. One of the reasons I really think that some of my videos that I put out do not get a lot of views is because especially some of my earlier videos, I'm too eccentric and flamboyant in my mannerisms when I speak. Well, that's something that I could control if I took courses in public speaking. So what I'm saying quite simply is I have a weakness that I'm admitting to that can be worked upon. That's an example of a self-assessment you got to do if you go into some of these businesses and you want to be self-employed, you want to be an entrepreneur, you really have to take stock of your strengths and your weaknesses overall. And you have to be realistic, guys. I mean, let's be honest. If you want to be a fitness instructor, but you tell me, Sean, I weigh 350 pounds, I'm 5'6", and I love to eat potato chips, obviously I'm going to tell you, you might want to pick a different career. You see what I'm saying? Like me, if I wasn't very good at writing, I would have never got this far in the antiques and collectibles trade. Because most of my knowledge before I started this YouTube channel, before people know me as the attractive guy who's on YouTube talking about antiques and collectibles, all 3,400 subscribers that I have, I was known as the writer in the trade, the guy behind the scenes. So what I'm telling you is, you really have to take stock of your strengths and weaknesses and analyze, is it worth pouring money into the business idea that you have? Now, if you have a passion to learn some of these markets, if you want to become a dealer, if you want to become a speculator, if you want to become an investor in the trade, guess what? You're going to have to learn, and the easiest way to learn is through the school of hard knocks, meaning you're probably going to spend money and you're probably going to lose money learning some of these lessons. Believe me, I've been in these markets since the age of 12. I've learned a lot in that time, and I've lost money on certain items that I've bought. So it's realistic to understand that with a loss of money or a loss of capital, comes experience and knowledge. So I hope this video has served you well. I just wanted to do a basic video where I talk about the easiest ways to build wealth and capitalism and also give you some examples as to why passive investing is awesome over the long term and why it has made so many people rich, guys. The easiest way to become a millionaire, in the United States at least, is through long-term investing in the stock market at large. That is the easiest way to become wealthy. Over the long period of time, I guarantee you the markets will reward you. That's all I'm going to state. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great night.